The house is looking disastrous right now. Please tell her to hurry back and clean up. My mother-in-law came all the way to my parents' house just to tell me that. But then, my mom made an even more shocking statement. My daughter passed away yesterday. I'm Kat, a 27-year-old housewife. It's been a year since I married Wayne. We met at our mutual friend's house party. I wasn't good at meeting guys, so my sweet friend set it up for me. That's where I met him. Hi, can I join you? Oh, sure. It was a couple of hours into the party when he suddenly popped up. We talked about a lot of things, and he asked me many questions, which made it easy for me to keep the conversation flowing. We were glued in our seats, talking until the wee hours, and I was hoping I would see him again. Luckily, he felt the same way, and we exchanged our numbers at the end of the night. From then on, we messaged each other every day and started casually dating. As we got to know each other better, he asked me to be his girlfriend. We kept our relationship fun and loving without any major quarrels. Your cooking is amazing. I'm impressed by the taste. Really? I'm so happy to hear that. I'll make you more. Whenever he came over, I often cooked for him. Seeing him enjoy my food delighted me. If we got married, I thought I'd be cooking like that for him every day. I couldn't help but smile at the thought. I did hope to marry him someday. Then, about a year into our relationship, he popped the question. Will you keep making delicious meals for me? Marry me. I was totally caught off guard by how quickly it happened, but I was ecstatic. Yes, I love you so much. Hence, the wedding preparation began. We quickly informed our parents and had the customary meet and greet. Then we tied the knot in a beautiful ceremony. Many friends and co-workers blessed us at our wedding and I felt an overwhelming sense of happiness. We had been living separately up to that point and finally moved in together. Wayne wanted me to focus on being a homemaker, so I quit my job to become a full-time housewife. I did my best to provide a comfortable home for him by expanding my cooking skills and keeping the house squeaky clean. However, there was one thing that grabbed my attention about Wayne after living together. He was way messier than I imagined. First off, he always left his clothes lying around. It was a common sight to see his socks or t-shirts scattered on the living room floor after he had taken them off. And after eating, he didn't bother to take his own dishes away but went straight to the sofa to lie down. I understood that it was my job to do the chores as a housewife, but I wished he'd be a bit more mindful about how he lived. Another surprise was that he couldn't do his tie by himself, and I had to help him. How did you manage before? Mom used to do it for me. Seriously? By the way, she used to iron my shirts every day. Can't you do it too? Um, okay, I'll iron them. Don't mess it up, okay? He deliberately sighed, tinged with a touch of irritation. His attitude disturbed me. He was sincere and kind before we got married, but something changed since then. He became colder towards me and acted more like a domineering husband, always nitpicking about what I did. Hey, why are we having fish today? Um, it's nutritious, and we had meat yesterday, so I thought fish would be good for today. Are you kidding me? You know I like red meat, right? I don't want to eat fish. But he often expressed his selfish desires. Hey, my shoes aren't polished enough. Make sure the beer is ice cold. Don't serve all the dishes at once. It's overwhelming, you know? Serve them like a course, one by one. Honestly, his demands were tedious, and it was getting on my nerves. Whenever I couldn't meet his standard, he'd blame me, saying, Mom always did it perfectly. Apparently, he was overly pampered and catered to by her for everything. I resented her for spoiling him so much. 
A few months into our marriage, we went over to his parents' house for the first time, and I witnessed a surprising scene. Welcome back, my dear. So good to see you. Hey, Mom. Glad to be back. Carrying such heavy stuff. Poor thing. Give it to me. I'll take care of it. Thanks, Mom. I'm baking your favorite cake, so let's have it together. Oh, sounds good. I'd love some coffee made by you, too. Of course, dear. Come, come, have a seat on the sofa. Miranda was only talking to Wayne nonstop, completely ignoring me like I wasn't even there. Larry, my father-in-law, greeted me and we engaged in a conversation, but Miranda was stuck to Wayne the whole time. Sorry about that, Cat. Miranda tends to be overprotective, and I've always tried to caution her, but she never listens. She's been like that forever. Wayne, well, he's overly dependent too, and I'm ashamed of it. I hope he's not causing trouble at home. Um, well... Oh, I guess he is, huh? I'm really sorry. I'll make sure to talk to him about it. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. I was relieved to know he had a better sense than the other two. If he had been as troubling as Miranda, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. Still, I was quite flabbergasted by how she treated Wayne. If she raised him that way, no wonder he turned out selfish and unable to do anything on his own. Maybe the issue was his environment, and I thought I may have been able to correct him. So I gathered up the courage and decided to point out his bad habits. Honey, leaving your stuff scattered everywhere like this isn't cool. I have to pick them up and put them in the laundry basket, you know? If you could do that yourself, the house would look a lot neater. Why do I have to do such a hassle? Maybe because you think it's a hassle, that's why you don't do it. By any chance, is your desk at work messy too? People around you might find it appalling and think you're incapable. What? I'm fine at the office. That might just be your perception. Habits at home definitely spill over to work. Ugh, fine. After I pressed him, he finally made some effort. The tactic appeared effective with him, so when I asked him to take his place to the kitchen, I mentioned it was to prevent any embarrassment for him at work. I was able to manipulate him, but sadly it didn't last long. One day, while I was relaxing at home, the doorbell rang. I was surprised to see Miranda standing at the front door. Oh, Miranda, is everything alright? Let me in. She just marched in without waiting for an answer. What's the matter? You should offer some drinks first, don't you think? You're inconsiderate. Oh, sorry. She showed up unannounced and ordered me around. I asked her what she'd like and served her the drink. While she drank it, she glared at me. What's your problem? Excuse me? I hear you're saying terrible things to Wayne regularly. That he's incapable at work and that people around him must be contemptuous. Oh, that's... He's exceptionally bright. No doubt everyone around respects him. How could a wife speak so horribly to her own husband? It seemed like he only conveyed the hurtful words to his mother, twisting the facts. And she just took whatever he said at face value and blamed me. I was exasperated. The situation had become quite a mess. He's special, you know. So, it's only natural for everyone to take care of him apart from work. Why can't you understand that? I was speechless. Having such distorted affection, she wasn't just overprotective. It went beyond that and it gave me the creeps. Then she made an unbelievable statement. Since you seem incompetent as a housewife, I'll come over to guide you. Huh? How's that? Isn't it great? Um, no. That's, uh, it's okay. What? Did you just say no? You seem to be severely disillusioned. You don't even realize that you're incompetent. I feel for Wayne for getting such a useless wife. Brace yourself. I'll whip you into shape. She was getting worked up all by herself. It was definitely going the wrong way. 
At that time, it seemed she had only come to tell me all that and left once she was done. That night, I confronted Wayne. Hey, why did you tell your mom things that aren't true? Huh? Things that aren't true? I told her exactly what happened. The fact that you hurt me is real. But I just wanted you to change. You just have to do the housework better. I heard she's coming over every day from now on. You better learn well from her. Don't you dare be rude, okay? He was completely on her side. Just as she doted on him, he also seemed to dote on her like a mama's boy. She started coming over the next day, just as she said. What's with all this dust? You haven't cleaned at all. This tastes terrible. So pathetic. That's why you're a useless wife. I wish Wayne would throw you out. I wondered why I had to be belittled like that. Her daily visits were becoming a significant source of my stress. As time went on, my health deteriorated and I decided to get checked up one day. To my astonishment, I found out that I was pregnant. Although it was unexpected, I felt joy knowing that my child was on the way. I immediately informed Wayne. Pregnant? Yeah, we're having a baby. Oh yeah? Well, keep doing your chores properly like before. Huh? I was puzzled by his reaction. He didn't sound happy about it at all. I told Miranda as well, but she reacted similarly to him. Don't slack off on the housework just because you have morning sickness and inconvenience Wayne. What? I was stunned and questioned their mindset. I felt it wouldn't be good for my mental health to be around them any longer. I was sure Miranda would keep harassing me and Wayne would keep acting selfishly. It would not only affect me, but also the baby. So when Wayne went to work and just before Miranda arrived, I quickly packed my bags and went to my parents' home. They were surprised when I suddenly showed up. When I explained the situation, they sympathized and were furious at the two. They said I could stay as long as I wanted due to the circumstances of my pregnancy. I took their words and resolved to stay for a while. As expected, Wayne called me non-stop. Hey, why aren't you home? Where are you? I'm at my parents' house. What are you doing there? Are you insane to skip your duty for that? I'm here to protect myself and the baby. If I stayed with you and your mom, I would definitely have a breakdown. So I'm not coming back. Cut it out. Do you think you can do whatever you want? Come back now. No way. I don't want to talk anymore, so I'm hanging up. Hey. I hung up and then blocked his number. I didn't want to deal with any more trouble from him. At that moment, I made up my mind to divorce him and raise my child alone. My parents agreed that it was for the better. For a while, I didn't receive any emails or visits from Wayne. I figured he was scared to face my parents. Miranda didn't have my number, so she couldn't reach me. I managed to stay away from them for a whole month allowing myself to mentally recover. However, Miranda must have had enough of me being away for that long. She came to see me unannounced. As I let out a sigh of annoyance and was about to open the door, my mom told me to stay in my room. Then she opened the door and began dealing with a Miranda. It's been a long time. What can I do for you today? Miranda widened her eyes and shouted, Bring out your daughter. Her house is looking disastrous now. Please tell her to hurry back and clean it up. She came all the way just to tell me that. Apparently, Wayne had been making a huge mess, and every time she went there, she had to spend a lot of time cleaning. So she needed me to come back and take over the responsibilities. She completely disregarded the fact that I was pregnant. I was flabbergasted. Then my mom made a surprising statement. She passed away yesterday. What? What are you talking about? Miranda was shaken and I was also stunned by it. She passed away? Huh? I asked her to run an errand on the way back from the doctor. But then she got hit by a car that ran a red light. That's why I can't bring her out even if you ask. What? My mom was totally serious, so Miranda seemed to believe her. I, 
I'm sorry for your loss. I didn't expect to hear this. I said many terrible things to her. I was just thinking about my son, but she must have been hurt. No, I intentionally hurt her. Said horrible things to her. I'm really sorry. Ah, uh, I see. Indeed, she was deeply hurt by you and Wayne. That's why she came back to us. If she hadn't returned here, she might not have had an accident. Y yes that's right. I'm really sorry. I don't know how to apologize enough. Miranda, overwhelmed with guilt, covered her face with both hands. Have you realized how badly you've hurt my daughter? Yes, I'm really ashamed. She kept apologizing and my mom stopped her. Please, forgive me for going a bit too far. Actually, Kat is alive. Huh? But the fact remains that she's deeply hurt and needs to rest. Only after hearing that she passed away did you finally admit your fault. If we had talked assuming she was alive from the beginning, it wouldn't have turned out this way. I apologize for my rough action. Miranda had a complex expression, but didn't blame her. It's because I pampered my son too much that he turned into an incompetent and irresponsible man. I'm really sorry for causing trouble. Miranda seemed to have truly reflected on her actions, but that didn't erase what had happened before. Afterward, I told Wayne that I wanted a divorce. He initially protested, saying that it was out of the question. But after my in-laws persuaded him, he reluctantly agreed. Subsequently, they came to apologize to me. They promised to re-educate him and assured me they'd ensure he paid child support on time. Currently, he's under strict discipline at his parents' house. They seem to be instructing him on how to take care of himself and cook. Despite complaining, he's in a situation where he has no choice but to do the chores, albeit clumsily. Occasionally, my in-laws get to see their grandson. As for Wayne, I plan to decide whether to involve him in a child's life based on my in-law's assessment of his maturity. Meanwhile, I've started working again and getting support from my family and raising my son. I'm working hard to earn enough for his future education and to allow him to pursue his interests.